sperm, strongulocentrotus, drabacensis shed its sperm and egg cells during the second week of February in the Oslo Fjord in Norway. This material is very favorable for studying fertilization and early embryo development in live material in the microscope. It is important, however, to keep the material just above the freezing point of seawater. At higher temperatures the eggs do not develop normally. Take a close look at the egg you see here. You will see the tiny sperm cells swimming around. Try to focus on the egg's outer membrane. Just 30 seconds ago at the egg's left up area, a sperm penetrated the membrane causing it to bend out at this spot. The eggs are about 75 to 150 micron in diameter, and mature sometime before they are shed. The eggs are surrounded by the vitellin membrane. After fertilization a new fertilization membrane is formed by a combination of the vitellin membrane and the material released from the so-called cortical granules. A surface coat, the hyalin layer is secreted shortly afterwards. The expansion of the fertilization membrane is very fast. As you see the membrane separates and bends out from the egg yolk at this spot. The membrane has now changed its properties. No further sperms are allowed to penetrate. Usually only the sperm head pass into the egg cell. The tail is left outside. The expansion of the fertilization membrane continues so that the yolk is surrounded by a white space filled with liquid. All fertilized eggs look like this after about two minutes. Now a period of about 4 hours pass without much visible activity. Inside the yolk, however, important things happens. These processes are best studied in specially prepared eggs which have been treated with chemicals and stains and are usually not visible in live egg cells due to their high yolk content. At this time the sperm nucleus and the egg nucleus fuse and form the zygote nucleus. About 3 or 4 hours later the zygote nucleus undergo a mitosis then the egg cell divides. Just before cytokinesis a characteristic earthquake movement of the whole cell is seen. Then the cell membrane starts to constrict at the equator. The constriction may be symmetric or not and varies between different texts. This part of the film and most later stages are made by time-lapse filming which has speeded up the natural process by about 150 times. The second division of the egg takes place about two hours after the first has been completed. The first two divisions are vertical, the third is horizontal. The forming cells are forced, however, to fill up the spherical space inside the egg maximally. The changes of the division axes in three dimensions are extremely interesting and are necessary in order to make an organized embryo. All cells divide synchronously at these stages. Provided the temperature is kept within strict limits, not exceeding 5 degrees Celsius, beautiful, normal divisions are seen.
During the fourth cleavage, when 16 cells are formed, the four cells at what is called the animal pole cleave equally and form eight so-called mesomeres, which are cells of the same size. The four cells at the vegetal pole, however, cleave unequally and form four large cells called macromeres and four smaller cells called micromeres. When the blastula has formed, and during the eighth division, when 265 cells have formed, one cilium appears on each cell. This is the last stage shown in this film. The blastula starts to rotate inside the vitellin membrane. The blastula then hatches from its fertilization membrane. What happens later? The blastula wall thickens and forms a plate at the vegetative pole. 32 primary mesenchyme cells invaginate into the blastocele and arrange themselves in a ring. This invagination forms a so-called gastrolith consisting of two shell layers. Now the larval skeleton starts to form. The hole in the inflated balloon becomes the anus in a future and oppositorial side. The cell layer flattens and the mouth develops. At these and later stages the development is very special with little resemblance to the human embryo.